Hello everyone and welcome to Thailand Unplugged. Let's have a quick look at some of the news we've got coming up today. Thailand ups pressure on protesters with a flurry of arrests, including some rappers. China launches anti-dumping probe into wines imported from Australia. The student protests are rocking Bangkok. Thailand to extend virus emergency degree as protesters swell. The Spratly Islands, an inseparable part of Vietnam. Vietnam gives a friendly warning to China. Hello there, I'm Stephen Clark, bringing you the latest news from Southeast Asia and the land of smiles, Thailand. Those and many other stories coming right up. Thailand's government ups pressure on protesters with a flurry of arrests. Nine pro-democracy activists, including two rappers, have been arrested on a crackdown on growing protests in Thailand, which have presented a serious threat to the country's military-backed government. Protesters have called for Priyat Chinacha, Thailand's Prime Minister and former Army General, amid accusations of incompetence and corruption. Priyat Chinacha seized power in 2014's military coup, then won an election in 2019, which he was widely seen as unfair and biased towards his administration. Young pro democracy movement which is demanding an overall of the government and a breaking taboo by calling for reform for the monarchy. The country has seen nearly daily rallies for over a month with some 20,000 turning out at the weekend to vent their anger at the military aligned government and call for discussions about the royal family's role. Overnight police detained three key activists before taking five more into custody this morning including two outspoken rap stars, taking the total to 11 arrests. Four further arrest warrants had been issued by police, they told reporters today. Those detained had all joined the protests on the 18th of July. They faced eight charges, including sedition, he confirmed. All were released later on bail. Beijing, the Chinese Ministry of Commerce said on Tuesday it had begun an anti-dumping investigation into imports of wine from Australia following a request from the Chinese Alcohol Drink Association on behalf of the domestic industry last month. The anti-dumping probe will look at imports of wine from Australia in containers holding two litres or less in 2019. The ministry said in a statement on its website, adding that it would also investigate any damage done to the Chinese wine industry from 2015 to 2019. Shares of Australia's Treasury Wine Estate, makers of the Penfold label, fell 14% in morning trading on Tuesday. It was not immediately clear if the Treasury is part of the probe. The probe comes against a backdrop of increased tension between the two countries after Canberra called for an international inquiry into the origin of the Chinese coronavirus. China is the top market for Australian wine exports and the country also is Australia's largest trading partner with two-way trade worth US $169.86 billion last year. China recently imposed dumping tariffs on Australia's barley, suspending some beef imports, warned Chinese students and tourists it wasn't safe to travel to Australia because of allegations of racism. Xi Jinping, the supreme commander of China, loves Australian wine, says it's the best in the world. And the only dumping in China of Australian wines is into swimming pools. Like the rest of the world, the Australian government and its people do not have a lot of time for the Chinese Communist Party at the moment. Pro-democracy protesters raised their hands in a three-fingered salute during a rally near the Democracy Monument in Bangkok, Thailand. It was the largest demonstration since Priyat Chinachar, 
the Prime Minister seized power in a coup in 2014. On August the 16th, more than 10,000 protesters flocked to the Democracy Monument in Bangkok, Thailand's capital. Students, unions and youth groups have led protests for more than a month across the country. They want the government to step down. They demand a new constitution and an end to the harassment of opposition campaigners. There was more controversy at a rally at Bangkok's Tamsat University in August the 10th. Some agitators openly call for reform of the monarchy, still a strict taboo in Thailand. Thailand has endured 12 coups since revolution brought an end to the absolute monarchy in 1932. Wrestling between generals and politicians has yielded 20 constitutions over the years. In recent years, at least nine Thai dissidents living outside the country have been disappearing, with several of them turning up dead in gruesome fashion. The weekend protests went off mostly peacefully, even though protesting is technically illegal under a current state of emergency. But the kingdom's long history of brutal crackdowns on protesters leaves cause for concern about a possible violent response, and nobody wants that. If the demonstrations continue and possibly grow in size and forcefulness, well then, that is when the Thai military will move in. Bangkok, the Thai government indicated on Wednesday it will extend its state of emergency through September in response to the country's first locally transmitted Chinese coronavirus case in nearly three months, fueling speculations that it seeks to clamp down on spreading protesters, but not a spreading virus. The announcement came after nearly two months without local transmission, with many people in Thailand questioning the need for an emergency degree. The degree, first introduced in late March, will be subject to cabinet approval next week. It is still necessary to have the degree because we are opening up the country for more business meetings and tourism to stimulate the economy, said Sumsak Rungseta, Secretary General of the National Security Council, adding that doctors had requested it to be maintained. The extension came after political protests took place last week against the government in defiance of the bans on gatherings. Samsuk, however, said the emergency degree would be used only to contain virus outbreaks and not rallies. So that's good news, isn't it? Political gatherings will be subject to the law, but not to the degree, he added. Thailand will begin allowing the entry of business executives for trade shows. Migrant laborers, filmmakers, medical tourists, Spokesman for the Government Centre for COVID-19 Situation Administration, or the CCSA, Tawizan Wisaniathon, said, Up to 110,000 migrant labourers from Laos, Myanmar and Cambodia will gradually be allowed entry and be tested for the coronavirus upon arrival. Foreign filmmakers and business executives will need a virus-free certificate from within three days before travel and have medical insurance. Medical tourists will have to stay in their hospitals for two weeks before taking additional trips in the country, Tuizen said. All foreigners entering will be subject to 14 days quarantine. Thailand has reported a total of 3,261 infections and 58 deaths. Pretty good record, I think. But if you're traveling to Thailand, you must be prepared to stay indoors for two weeks. And if you can do that, welcome to the land of smiles. The Spratly and Parcel Islands are inseparable part of Vietnam's territory, Vietnam's foreign ministry spokesperson has stated. Hanoi, Vietnam has affirmed many times and reiterated that the Hong Sa, Spratly and the Trong Sa, Parcel Archipelagos are inseparable part of its territory, Foreign Ministry spokesperson Li Thai Thong Hung has said. She said the statement at a regular press conference of the Foreign Ministry on August the 20th. In response to the media questions on Vietnam's stance regarding China's deployment of the H. 6J bomber. 
to Pulam Island in the Hong Sa Archipelago in early August. Vietnam has sufficient legal basis and historical evidence affirming its sovereignty over Hong Sa and Trong Sa in line with international law. She said, adding that the deployment of weapons and fighter aircraft to Hong Sa not only is it a violation of Vietnam's sovereignty, but also further stresses the situation in the East Sea. We call on all parties to make responsible contributions to maintaining peace and stability and security in the East Sea, Hung said. Commenting on further information that thousands of Chinese fishing vessels could flock to the East Sea after China's fishing ban expires, Hung said Vietnam's stance on the so-called fishing ban has been clearly stated. Hang also made it quite clear that Vietnam rejects China's unilateral decision in the current global and regional context. Vietnam asked that China not further complicate the East Sea situation, she said. Holidays to Thailand won't happen in 2020, Thailand's tourism board is saying. Yes, the country's tourism board has dashed hopes that travellers might have a winter sun holiday. It explains that they are unlikely to open their border to travellers in 2020. While the easing of lockdown has meant many have been able to fit in a summer holiday, it's bad news for those hoping to head to Thailand this year. The Deputy Governor of the Tourism Authority of Thailand, or TAT if you like, Chatan Kanjara Na Ayadaya, explained the Christmas period is usually the highest season, and I'm looking horribly even to the Chinese New Year in February. It is not a rosy picture. The World Health Organization, or WHO, or WHO if you like, have praised Thailand for its handling of the Chinese coronavirus. To date, the country has had a total of 3,351 cases and 58 deaths. Not a single case has been recorded in the country in the last 78 days, but one has been detected just recently, which could result in a crackdown. Thai people realise that should the country open too quickly, it would set the tourism industry back much further, likely well into the next year. So whereas financial priorities are high, a lot of the Thais in mid and low income employment are putting health first returning to their families and finding out other ways to scrape out a living and sitting this out. It is widely believed that it appears that postponement opening of the borders is a preventive move to stop the country suffering a second wave of Chinese coronavirus. So think twice before you order those tickets to Thailand. A viral report on WeChat claims that more than 2 million companies in China have closed after the floods and potential food crisis and a typhoon now heading China's way. A director of one of China's largest car dealers is running out of options. Her firm's 100 outlets have been closed for more than a month because of the Chinese coronavirus, cash reserves are dwindling and banks are reluctant to extend deadlines on billions of yen in debt coming due over in the next few months. There are also other creditors to think about. If we can't pay back the bonds, it will be very, very bad, said Brigida, whose company has 10,000 employees and sells mid to high range cars, such as the BMWs. With much of China's economy still idle, as authorities try to contain an epidemic that has infected more than 75,000 people, millions of companies across the country are in a race against the clock to stay afloat. Thailand warns social media against publishing misleading information. Thailand's Ministry of Digital Economy and Society has warned popular social media and websites against publishing information that could mislead or cause unrest in Thailand. Minister of Digital Economy and Society said 3,083 social media pages and websites 
that are potentially in violation of the law have been reported to the ministry. Authorities have collected evidence and will submit them to the court, according to the minister. So far, the Thai court has already ordered the closure of 653 social media pages or websites. However, there are many social media pages that have ignored the court order. Those who don't obey the court order to close will face punishment. Misleading information in a government form or misleading information in a young Thai nationals form. So exactly what is the misleading information? But in all fairness to the Thai government, there's been some really stupid reporting going around lately, especially with people that don't know what they're talking about.